gentlemen. Okay, today we're going to talk about the mole concept. For some of you who are in the online textbooks, you'll see that there's uh, they cover them in different orders, and but this is about the right developmental time to talk about moles. So you can measure the mass of something or the volume or the number of pieces it has. For mass, we measure in grams. For volume, we measure in liters, but for the number of pieces, we measure in moles. Moles are defined as the number of carbon atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. One mole is the same as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and you treat it basically like a very large dozen. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is also known as Avogadro's number. Representative particles are the smallest piece of a substance. For an element, it is an atom unless the element is diatomic. For a molecular compound, it's a molecule, and for an ionic compound, it's a formula unit. Conversion factors are used to change units using equivalencies, and there are three questions you have to ask yourself. Number one, what unit or units do you want to get rid of? Two, where does it go to cancel out? And three, what can you change it into? Remember conversion factors are basically just multiplying by one. So let's practice it. So it says how many molecules of carbon dioxide are in 4.56 moles of carbon di dioxide? So we start with what we know, which is 4.56 moles of carbon dioxide. We know how many molecules there are in a mole because that's Avogadro's number. So we say 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole of carbon dioxide. So if you notice, that will then cross out those two units because they're on two sides of the dividing line. So what you're left with is molecules, which is what the question is asking for. So that gives you 27.45 times 10 to the 23rd, or 2.745 times 10 to the 24th, which is actually the correct answer. So how many moles of water is 5.87 times 10 to the 22nd molecules? Well, we start with what we know, then we multiply it by a mole of water, which gives us it's over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Again, that's just a factor of 1. And so that crosses out our molecules, and what we're left with is 0 0.0975 moles of hydrogen, dihydrogen monoxide, or water. Now, what you would do then is convert this to scientific notation, so you get 9.75 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of water. The AMU, or atomic mass unit, was 1 12th the mass of carbon-12 atom. I told you that before. Since the mole is the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12, the decimal number on the periodic table is the mass of the average atoms in an atomic mass unit and the mass of one mole of these atoms in grams. So, in other words, a mole of a substance differs by what elements make up that substance. So the mass of one mole of an element in grams would be similar to this question. So we have um, 2.3 moles of carbon 12.01 grams of carbon has the same number of atoms as 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen and 55.85 grams of iron because those are the atomic mass units. So we can write this as 12.01 grams of carbon equals 1 mole of carbon. So we can indirectly count things by weighing them. So we get rid of the moles and we get 28.1 grams of carbon. So how many moles of magnesium are in 4.61 grams? Well, we take what we know and we multiply it times the molar ratio, and we get 0.190 moles of magnesium. Now this is, this is important because this is something that you're going to be doing throughout chemistry. So just keep in mind that it's going to be a fairly lengthy one. And by the way, the, lecture, the worksheet for this one will take you a while. So make sure you're doing this because that practice is about the best way you can uh, have to understand this material. So let's take a look at compounds. In one mole of water, 
molecules, there are two moles of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms. So to find the mass of one mole of a compound, you'll determine the moles of the elements that are present in the compound, find out how much they would weigh individually, and then add up all the parts. So our question is, what is the mass of one mole of methane? Well, one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams. Four moles of hydrogen are 1.01 times 4, so that gives us 4.04, .04. and then we add those two together, we get 16.05 grams per mole of methane. Same thing with this one. What is the molar mass of iron 2, or, or iron 3 oxide? So 2 moles of iron is 55.85 times 2, that gives us 111.70 grams. 3 moles of oxygen at 16 grams each gives us 48 grams, and the final molar mass, we add them together and get 159.70 grams. It's exactly the same question, it's just worded a little differently, and I wanted to show you that. We can use molar mass to find the moles of compounds, or otherwise known as counting the pieces by weighing them. Remember that the molar mass is the number of grams in one mole of atoms, formula units, or molecules. We can make conversion factors from these pieces of information to change the grams of a compound to the moles of a compound, or change the moles of a compound to the grams of a compound. So in other words, they're a type of conversion factor. For example, how many moles is 5.69 grams of sodium hydroxide? Well, first you have to find out the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So we're going to add that up. 22.99 plus 16 plus 1.01 .01 gives us a total of 40 grams per mole. So now we take uh, the grams to moles. So we have 5.69 times 1 mole over 40 grams, and that gives us 0.142 moles of sodium hydroxide. We will cover how to do gas conversions during the gas lecture at the end of this semester. So hold on to your helium before, until we get there, but there will be some stuff that deal with gases later. Like all percents, percent composition is found by dividing the part of the whole and multiplying by 100%. Essentially you find the mass of each component and then you divide by the total mass. So if we're going to calculate the percent composition of a compound that is 29 grams of silver and 4.38 grams of sulfur, we take the total mass, which is 33.8. Then we take each component and divide it by 33.8, multiply it by 100, and that gives our percent compositions. So you can see this is 86.9% silver and 13.1% sulfur. I shouldn't have to say this part, but I'm gonna make sure that your percent compositions add up to 100. Sometimes with rounding it looks a little off, so you need to make sure that you make it 100. So we're going to calculate from the formula. So let's calculate the percent composition of ethane. That's what this is, C2H4 is ethane. If you're given a formula and no other information, you assume that you only have one mole of it. So this is where you can make an assumption in chemistry. Then you know the pieces in the whole. So this has two um, this has two moles of carbon, which gives us 24.02 grams, four moles of hydrogen at 4.04 .04 grams. Our total mass is 28.06. So then all we got to do is divide by the total. So we can see that it's 85.6% carbon and 14.4% hydrogen. Here's a similar question, percent to mass. How much aluminum in 450 grams of aluminum carbonate? So first you have to make sure that you determine the formula. So we know that aluminum has a plus 3, carbonate has a minus 2, so it's Al2CO33. Then you find the total mass. So we're going to do that here. And that gives us a total mass of 233.994 grams. That's going to be our total that we divide by. Okay, So we take our totals. Our percent aluminum is 53.964 because it's 26.982 grams times 2. Divided by 233.994 times 100 is 23.06%. And the percent aluminum times the total mass of the sample given 
gives you 450 grams times 23.06 percent that gives us 103.8 grams of aluminum because it's just asking you for aluminum in the question so you always have to make sure that you're reading the question first okay we're going to pick up with part two in just a moment and uh, i hope that you will join me directly on to that next uh, section of this lecture if you have any questions of course please see me during office hours or send me an email have a great day